people like me. You need people like me so you can point your fing fingers and say that's the bad guy. This is a video to Eddie Hearn, Mr. Brains of Britain. Let me explain it to you, my friend, how you cost your man over 100 million. 15 million step aside money, free money. Then Tyson would have gone and done what AG couldn't do. He's gone and beat you, second brought all the belts back to the UK. In the meantime, AG could have had a couple of easy victories, another 30 mil. Then he could have challenged Tyson for the belt. Well, who knows what numbers that would have done. So, yeah, you know, you don't need to be the brains of Britain to see how you cost him money and put him in a position where he was on a hide into nothing, Mr. Brains of Britain. You got him beat over there when he could have had 15 million free money, step aside money, and Tyson would have gone and beat his man up for him and then brought all the belts back in. He could have challenged him after some easy victories. Free money, I might as well say. So, yeah, you're a clever man, Eddie, aren't you? Very clever. So when you're trying to look down on me, by Quit your crying, big John Fury. What are you so mad about? What's with your belly aching, eh? You're trying to chastise Eddie Hearn for money that you think he left on the table. You know, I remember... I recall. Some time ago, you know... You know. In the build-up of what was supposed to be Joshua versus Fury... Back then. Fury gets off the phone with the Saudi Arabian prince on a Sunday. The following Monday, the arbitrator rules in Deontay Wilder's favor, ordering Tyson Fury to face him for a third time. Bear in mind, Fury's promoter Bob Arum assured Eddie Hearn that Deontay Wilder's rematch clause, it expired, that the mediation arbitration wouldn't be an issue. He assured him of this as Eddie Hearn negotiated the fight, got the site fee, was close to the finish line. Tyson Fury himself jumps on his social media, says he just got off the phone with the Prince and the Joshua fight, the undisputed heavyweight title fight, was a go. Just for the mediation arbitration to go in Wilder's favor, and the rest, as they say, was history. No undisputed title fight. The following day, you know what Tyson Fury was doing? Tyson Fury was doing cannonballs in the pool. In spite of how much money they left on the table when it came to the Joshua fight. Money they left on the table because according to Fury's promoter, they weren't gonna even try to pay Deontay Wilder to step aside, to stand down. Let them go through with this fight and he can settle up with the winner. Did you forget about that? Did you forget that Bob Arum said that? They weren't gonna pay Wilder to step aside. Did you forget? Of course I didn't. The money on the table for the Joshua fight greatly dwarfed the money on the table for a third Deontay Wilder fight. But in spite of the money that was on the table, the Fury people didn't want to pay Wilder to step aside. So who are you to chastise Eddie Hearn here and now. You should have gotten the Joshua business while the getting was good. You expect him to bend over backwards for your son's belt because your son is out of options. He's running out of high profile fights. You think you're dealing with the run of the mill boxer in what is a run of the mill voluntary title defense when this would be anything but. This would be one of the biggest fights in British boxing, one of the biggest fights in boxing as a whole, globally. The biggest swindle is pretending that it was Tyson Fury affording Anthony an opportunity when it's the other way around. Tyson Fury don't get it this kind of money without Anthony Joshua. That's why you're still belly aching about it, and that's why I've no doubts in the buildup of Tyson Fury's next fight, whoever he ends up fighting, you can expect that he's going to mention Anthony Joshua quite a bit. Now ask yourselves a question. If it's Fury affording Anthony an opportunity, why is he affording Anthony an opportunity? He's coming off of back-to-back -back losses. If it's Tyson Fury that has all the power and all the leverage, you want to Play dumb, play dumb. Play stupid. Because at the gate and at the box office, that's where it counts the most. And that's where the fight fans, the paying public, that's where they'll let you know what they really think of you. If they think of you at all, you and your fight. Big John Fury thinks he's in any position to chastise Eddie Hearn for money that Eddie and Anthony left on the table. You guys left a lot of money on the table. When you didn't want to pay Wilder to step aside, do you remember that? 
You guys left a lot of money on the table, didn't you? Now you're belly aching. Because Tyson Fury set to return to action the same month as Anthony Joshua, but he's running a scarcity of opponents, a scarcity of high-profile fights. There are very few fighters out there that make for a box office fight involving Tyson Fury. Anthony Joshua is just one among them, and the other, really the only other, is Oleksandr Yusik. Now, granted that he could fight in a very interesting fight against Joe Joyce, but he doesn't want to do that. That's a high-risk, low-reward fight. So what are we looking at? A Derek Chisora trilogy or a Manuel Char fight? My honest opinion, he'd be better off affording Jarrell Miller that opportunity than any one of them. Jarrell Miller, he's got a big fucking mouth, big fucking mouth, so big, I think a lot of Brits would like to see Tyson Fury close it. Not really sure what Jarrell Miller's availability is right now, but I'm just bouncing ideas around. In any event, Anthony Joshua ain't Team Fury's problem anymore. And if they keep mentioning this guy en route to whatever fight Tyson Fury is about to fight, it only makes it that much more obvious that they needed Anthony Joshua. That they still need him because it's hard enough to get at the big bucks without him. What are you gonna give the British boxing community, the British boxing fans in December? A refurbished, repackaged, reheated fight with Derek Chisoria? Is that the best you can do? You stick that back in the microwave? That's pathetic. They better get your own. Miller on the phone. Just being honest with you, this whole thing has been one big fucking con job. They're trying to make you believe that Tyson Fury has all the power and all the leverage in the situation because he's got a belt and he's still got an O. Well, you know who else has an O? Jermall Charlo has an O. Demetrius Andre has an O. David Benavidez has an O. Now, you tell me, out of those three guys, which one is a bigger draw than Canelo Alvarez, who has two losses in the column? Well, what do you think? That because you're undefeated, you got more marquee value than this? guy okay show and prove buddy the both of you guys are set to return to action the same month you're essentially going head to head with each other we'll see who's fight you see the problem with the furies the big blowhard furies like big blowhard john fury the furies always got a fucking problem and when they ain't got a fucking problem they're causing problems huey fury tyson fury it's the same fucking shit always a problem always a fucking problem you want to watch a soap opera you watch a soap opera you want wwe shenanigans wwe antics you watch a wwe but this is boxing and the boxing fans, the paying public, thank God but so much patience. And this little circus, this little fiasco you've put together the last couple of weeks, it's worn on their patience. You don't believe me? Go look at TBRB's ranks and see if you can find Tyson Fury. Then go to Box Rex and see if you can find Tyson Fury. Then go over to Ring Magazine, the Bible of boxing. See if you can find Tyson Fury in their rank standings. The constant contradictions, the retirements and unretirements and re-retirements. And now the repackaged and refurbished fight with Derek Chisora. It's boxing. And boxing fans only got but so much patience. You're insulting our intelligence with this stuff is what you're doing. There ain't that many inbred bozos buying into Tyson Fury's shtick anymore. There just aren't. You've got all the power. You've got all the leverage. So go make the money. Get the big bucks without Anthony. If you can. Because if I don't know nothing, if I don't know nothing else, I know this guy. He's still got all his supporters, and he doesn't actually need Tyson Fury to get in a world title. He's got options, he's got marquee value, and because he has both, he has leverage. He doesn't actually have to accept your deal, live by your terms, or play by your rules. God knows Tyson Fury doesn't abide by anybody's. Well, so you fight, Tyson Fury. What are you so worried about Anthony Joshua for? He's coming off two back-to-back -back losses. He's a beaten man. It's not your problem. Well, so you fight, Tyson Fury. In men's featherweight and super featherweight news, per a tweet from Dake Jonathan, WBC has approved a request for current 126-pound titleist Ray Vargas to challenge for the newly vacated 130-pound title. Vargas will have to face current number one contender Oshaki Foster. WBC WBO belts relinquished by Shakur Stevenson after missing weight ahead of the win over Robson Kansai Sao. Well, at least now we know why they decided not to move forward with that Ray Vargas versus Leo Santa. Cruz unification match. The unification at featherweight, it's likely because this is a play to get another belt on their side of things. Oh. Have Ray Vargas move up. If he wins... If he wins, you got another belt on your side of things. Though so if he loses... You've still got another belt on your side of things because Oshaki Foster is a PBC fighter. Ray Vargas losing at 130 pounds won't affect his status as a champion at 126. He goes up there, loses to Oshaki, goes back down to featherweight. Leo Santa Cruz is supposed to be moving ahead with the Lee Wood fight. They probably like Leo Santa Cruz's chances against Lee Wood. They figure he's going to beat Lee Wood. And if he does, by the time he does, moving forward, they can always do that unification 
unification fight with Rey later, if Rey loses to Oshaki. This is a play to get at another belt. That's what this is. But why is the PBC in such a hurry to bring more belts to their side of things? More champions, I should say, when they can barely keep the champions they already have active. It's not like they're getting a bunch of fight dates over at Fox. Not like they got a jam-packed schedule at Showtime. They ain't got a bunch of fight dates there either. I wonder what the next year will bring. You know, if Fox ends up leaving boxing the way many industry insiders speculate they will, will that... Will those fighters that have been fighting on Fox migrate back over to Showtime? And if they do... If they do, will the higher-ups at Showtime decide to give Stefan Espinoza a bigger boxing budget? Because they really haven't done a heck of a lot this year. For the last three or four years, the PBC have been spreading themselves thin. They're stable, I should say, spreading them between Fox and Showtime. Fox ends up bowing out of the sport of boxing, and they're left only with Showtime as a broadcast partner. Will all of their fighters be so accommodated by Showtime. Can Showtime accommodate them? I should say. Will they get a bigger budget next year based on that, or will the budget continue to shrink? Because I suspect, over time, it has. That's why Jermel Charlo only fought once this year, and that's why I suspect Jermel Charlo, that guy's not injured. You know what it is. They took one good long look at that fight and asked themselves, what the hell are we going to put this thing on for? It would be cheaper to throw Jermel Charlo a couple hundred down for his troubles and not do the show altogether. We'll be in the hole even more money doing the show. Not gonna make any fucking money off of Jermall Charlo versus Masia Shulietsky, so why put it on? I suspect that Showtime's budget has shrunken over time, which begs the question, why is the PBC even in a hurry to bring another belt to their side of things, crown another champion, when they can barely accommodate the champions and the challengers and the fighters that are already there, the fighters they already have? It's not like you're keeping those guys busy. You're not keeping those guys busy. Belt goes over there. What they're thinking is, we're going to bring that WBC title over to this side of things so that the winner of the fight can potentially unify with newly crowned WBA champion Hector Garcia. They figure the winner of the fight is going to be Oshaki Foster. Oshaki Foster beats Ray Vargas. He can then go into a unification match with Hector. The problem is... Can they deliver a fight like this in a timely fashion? That's the question, because the PBC have a tendency of over-marinating fights and sitting on them until they're past the shelf life, past the sell-by date. It wouldn't be the worst thing in the world that they're trying to do their own unification matches if they could deliver them in a timely fashion, which they almost never do. That's what I think this is. It's what I think is going on. And just in keeping with news at or around these weights, hand injury to Joe Cordina scraps junior lightweight title fight versus Shafkat Rakhimov, source says. Joe Cordina's junior lightweight title defense versus Shafkat Rakhimov, scheduled for November 5th in Abu Dhabi, the United Arab Emirates, is off. After Cordinia suffered a hand injury that will require surgery, a source told ESPN, the IBF informed Cordinia, 15-0 with nine knockouts on Monday, that he has been stripped of his title, a source said. A dubious decision considering that... It's been well over three years since Errol Spence Jr. satisfied a mandatory for the IBF, and he's got one in the queue. Jaron Ennis, you think about the junior middleweight division. Joe Cordina's injured. It's not that he doesn't want to fight. The guy's injured. You gave Errol Spence Jr. leeway when he was injured after he flipped that Ferrari, but you can't extend that same professional courtesy to Joe? That's bullshit. Rakimov, the organization's number one contender, and Zelfa Barrett, yet another matchroom fighter, who is ranked at number two, will be in line to vie for the vacant 130 pounds belt. When the IBF sanctioned a fight between its then-champion Kenichi Ogawa and Cordinia, it did so under the provision that the winner fights Rakimov, 16-0 with one draw, 13 knockouts. By September 2nd, Cordinia, an Olympian from Wales, won the title in June with a highlight reel KO in the second round. In July, the IBF granted Cordinia a medical extension to allow the fight against Rakimov, the mandatory challenger, on November 5th. The IBF granted Cordinia another medical extension that would expire January 4th, but the 30-year-old won't be able to compete until approximately March. According to an orthopedic hand surgeon consulted by the organization, Rakimov, ESPN's number two junior lightweight, was slated to face Ogawa last year, but withdrew because of injury. In his lone title challenge, the Tajikistan-born fighter has held a draw against Joseph... Wait, so you're saying that you stripped this guy because he won't be able to defend the title until March? Then why haven't you stripped Errol Spence Jr.? When's the last time he satisfied 
quite a mandatory for you guys. Between the time he flipped that Ferrari and the time he returned to action, it had been well over a year. That was from late 2019 to late 2020. No mandatory satisfied, not for the IBF. You didn't satisfy one for them last year. You didn't fight at all last year. The IBF didn't strip him then. This year. They still didn't order him to fight anybody. Why does it seem like the IBF is only Johnny on the spot when it comes to matchroom fighters? You know, as soon as Josh Warrington won the IBF title from Kiko Martinez, they were very Johnny on the spot with Luis Lopez, Josh's mandatory challenger. Joe Cordina, he just won this title. He literally just won this title. They're Johnny on the spot with a mandatory. Why aren't they this Johnny on the spot with their mandatories at 154 pounds? Are you noticing a pattern? They don't seem to be all that Johnny on the spot with the mandatories when PBC fighters are involved. Bakram Murtazaliev has been the IBF's mandatory challenger since late 2019. And they haven't held... They haven't held anybody's feet to the fire about that. They haven't. Jermel Charlo procured the IBF title in 2020 against Jason Rosario. And they're not pestering Jermel Charlo with these kinds of intrusions and deadlines. He only fought once all of last year. They didn't bother him. He's only fought once all of this year, set to sit out the rest of it. And when he comes back, he's supposed to be fighting Tim Zhu. Not even the IBF's mandatory challenger, the WBO's mandatory challenger. Bakram Murtazaliev has been the mandatory challenger for the IBF longer than Tim zhu has been the mandatory challenger for the WBO. But they're not bothering Jermel Charlo. They're not holding his feet to the fire. And all I'm saying is it starts to look a certain way. Whenever a matchroom fighter's got the red belt, you're real Johnny on the spot with the mandatories, but when it's a PBC guy... You're saying that this guy's injuries are going to keep him out of action too long. Long enough that you won't let him hold the title while he recuperates. Well, why didn't you strip Errol Spence then? Why didn't you strip him after the car accident? Why didn't you strip him after the retina injury? Why does Jermel Charlo get to sit out the rest of this year without you guys sanctioning him, threatening him, stripping him? What's going on here? All things even, if it were the same across the board for everyone, for every champion, with every promotional outfit, I wouldn't complain. But there's clearly something going on here. You are quite prejudicial when the champion is a matchroom fighter and they're increasingly lenient when the champion is a PBC fighter. They're just not as Johnny on the spot with the mandatories. They don't seem to want to move their ranks along quite as much and it's noticeable. It's dubious is what it is because this kid just won that belt. He's injured. The same way that Errol Spence Jr. suffered injuries that kept him out of action. Well, so did Joe Cordina, so why don't you give him that same professional courtesy? What's the problem? Looks like Zelfa Barrett's gonna be fighting Rakamov now. Another matchroom guy if he wins. If he wins and he becomes IBF champion, maybe they can do a fight between him and Joe Cordina, though. Shafkat Rakamov, he's no slouch. He's a busy puncher. Zelfa Barrett's got his work cut out for him, believe you me. But it's up to Zelfa Barrett now to ensure that belt stays at matchroom. 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 matchroom.